Merry Christmas in August. It's very exciting. <laughs> Merry yes. Christmas in August. It's a Yay. new thing. <laughs> And we are here to do a special episode, a bonus episode. We are doing a quick review of the latest episode of Ted Lasso that aired this uh, this Friday, and it is called The Carol of the Bells. And so we just had to talk about it because it's a Christmas episode of Ted Lasso. So it's very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel good, Rachel Wagner, and Carrie's here. Hi, guys. Good to be here. Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Merry Christmas to you. You know, Christmas in July just flew by. So it was kind of fun, but weird to watch a Christmas episode of Ted Lasso in August. Yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's actually, I don't think unheard of to have this happen. But normally, I think it works out because most traditionally, most television seasons start in the fall so you were able to have the christmas episode be in november or december without too much of a problem right in this case with it starting in uh july the end of july it just yeah. it's gonna create create problems no matter well, when and, they have it yeah i i kind of like that though because it gives me the old kind of sitcom feel but it's apple tv you know it's right. like it's it's all streamed but i now with a christmas episode in August, but it, it kind of has that feel and pace of um, old sitcom. Yeah. Showings. Yeah. And if people want to hear a really great discussion of uh, Christmas episodes of television shows, you should listen to our one of our we have two episodes where I interviewed. Uh, there's actually a Christmas TV historian named Joanna Wilson, and that's like her whole job is is chronicling and cataloging uh yes. christmas episodes of television shows so and we had a great fun. yeah she's, she's awesome interact with yeah yeah she's great and we we've had her on the show twice we should have her on on again i should reach out to her but anyway i'll put links down to both of those episodes because we talked a lot about charlie brown and a lot about uh you know some of those other iconic uh yeah. christmas episodes of television shows uh so take a look at that and and so uh, I guess we should maybe say a little bit about the show itself, Ted Lasso. Yeah. And uh, it, have you been watching since the beginning or did you just recently binge it or where were you at on it? Well, I didn't catch it at the very beginning, like um, when it first aired. I definitely saw the hype and I was intrigued by it because of um, Jason Sudeikis's character that this is based off of. I mm -hmm. always thought that those sports center or the ESPN commercials yeah. were so funny because, well, I don't know. It just, and then he had this segment, this character on SNL where he was the coach, you know, in a locker room too. And, um, oh, you know, that might've been someone else actually. Um, I can't think of his name right now, but I always loved that. I thought that was so yeah, funny. Yeah. So I did not watch it from the beginning i just caught up with season one this summer and then mm -hmm. have been watching season two in real time yeah i watched it oh gosh what was it in the spring sometime i forget okay uh, when i posted my review but yeah i caught up on it season one and i just absolutely loved it and it's yeah. it's hard when a show is very hyped you know for it to kind of live up to that right. hype but I do think this show does live up to it. It's so warm hearted and so yeah. positive. And, and we've talked about it, that the sort of the main downside to the show is that it does have a lot of profanity. So mm -hmm. some of our listeners probably won't, won't like it for that reason, but that's really right. the only reason I can think of to not like the show, if that's not yeah. for you, which is fine and understandable, yeah. but, uh, it is, uh, I don't know. To me, I was willing to forgive that because, uh, because I think it makes sense for the characters partly because yeah. they're soccer players. I mean, they're probably, right. <laughs> it's probably accurate <laughs> and I don't know. It just, it doesn't bother me that much, I guess, but I can see why it might. Right. Um, but other than that, it's just such a warm hearted, sweet yeah. show that I think it overcomes any of those kinds of obstacles for me, at least. You know, for me too, actually, and I don't yeah. usually like to watch things with a lot of profanity, but mm -hmm. um, this being, that really is my only critique about, yeah. this, about this series. And it's the reason why I may hesitate to like recommend it to certain people or something. Right. But um, like you said, the stories are so deep and they're so well written. And to me, that has been my experience with British TV 
um, has been the much more profanity than yeah. American TV. So him, an American going over to Britain, like to England to coach a, a English football team in the football league is, is kind of a hilarious kind of clash because he does not swear actually mm -hmm. it's very rare yeah. that he actually his character swears right so um it, it's pretty it, much i would say 90 percent of the profanity comes from the soccer players which right. again i feel like kind of makes sense for their characters right. and even in uh the when you deal particularly with roy who has a mouth <laughs> that you uh you so he starts to kind of come around a little bit and realize uh, yes. in the course of the season and so yeah, it's a great show and uh, they have 12 episodes of season two. I've actually gotten to see eight of them so far in a preview that I, I know. Wow, special <laughs> so I girl. Was, I, I know I was waiting around for everyone to watch the Christmas episode <laughs> because I loved it so much. And I was like, ah, when are everybody else going to get to see it? So it finally aired this weekend. And what, what were your overall thoughts about this episode yes i mean this episode is so warm-hearted yeah it every storyline just goes this to this wonderful warm place that that you want a christmas that we want from our hallmark christmas movies honestly like yeah. it just we love that about those christmas movies and this i kept almost waiting for for the um the crinkle in the storyline right, right? Yeah. or the you know the other shoe to drop and something bad would happen but nothing did and it was precious from start to finish i loved it good. yes i mean up until this episode my favorite holiday episode of a television show and i have to let this kind of sit longer to see sure. where it comes but i love in mary teller more there's a really great oh. episode of that show where mary's stuck at the uh at the kind of switchboard or uh, that yeah. she has to man the news on christmas eve so she's all alone Aww. and uh and then of course the the whole team kind of comes to her yeah. rescue and they celebrate christmas together and it's a great episode Aww. and so that's always been my my all-time favorite but yeah. i don't know this was so good i absolutely loved it and <laughs> i i think that all there's sort of three main story beats to this episode and i think that all three are just so so delightful they're wonderful so delightful you know who i wanted to see more of though was nate i wanted to see nate okay, with his yeah. family at christmas but um but That's instead we, yeah we follow instead we follow higgins yes. ted and rebecca right and then and then roy. also yeah roy yeah. roy and kylie yeah. and <laughs> my, so let's start with first you have rebecca and uh ted yeah. And Ted starts out, he is uh, celebrating Christmas with his son over Zoom mm -hmm. and he gives him a drone. And so yeah. that kind of takes off his, his attention. Yeah. And so he's sort of left there alone watching mm -hmm. It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> and drinking, <laughs> drinking <laughs> whiskey, yeah, watching It's right. a Wonderful Life. You know, <laughs> I thought that that actually, that just pulled up my heartstrings because yeah. I think since over the past year, we all have had really, we've had to rely on Zoom, FaceTime, all this yeah. stuff over the pandemic to communicate with loved ones. And you just know how, how fall, like it falls so short, right? It falls so short of the real thing. You don't, you don't want it to like, it's a, it's a bad substitute. Yeah. You because you do get that. pretty easily distracted. That's the thing you don't like when someone's with you, yeah, hundred percent. Then, then that's just a different experience. Like you can't get as distracted, yeah. especially you're a kid. Yeah. Yeah. So he gives he gives his son this great gift, and that his son wants to go play with right away. This yeah. drone, and and then he's done. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the, that is the thing about the holidays can be really hard for for singles because you are are definitely reminded of the fact that you're single a lot, yeah. Yeah. and also the the uh just so much of the stuff the act the actual physical activities that you yeah. do are kind of group activities are kind of family activities and doing yeah. them by yourself it's just not as it's not the same experience and i would say in general the holidays without children are not the same yeah like whether it's your kids or not like 
it's just yeah. not quite as fun yeah. when you're just with adults, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just not the same. <laughs> it's not the same. I mean, I, I understand that, especially based on the other two storylines that are so yeah. centered around family and stuff here. But the beautiful thing about this Ted storyline is that yeah. Rebecca comes and yeah. saves him from himself. And I love that so much yeah. uh, because she knows that she knows what it's like to be divorced. She's yeah. been there. And that Christmas after your first Christmas after the divorce is so hard. She knows. And so she invites him to go with her to basically like play Santa yeah. for a bunch of families that she does. And I guess she does this every year. And uh, there's just some really sweet moments when they're you know giving out the presents. But then also I love that whole scene when they just stop and listen to the to this performers sing last christmas and yes. uh, that was just so sweet yeah because yeah. because you could feel it you could feel it was a little sorrowful too you know mm -hmm. they're both remembering and but yet they're forward looking and and now looking at yeah. um serving other people which is such that what christmas is all about it's it's about loving others you know being there for yeah. them giving gifts and I love that. Because I know that before I started the podcast, like Christmas was kind of a sad time for me because yeah. it just, I don't know, it was just a reminder of the things that other people have that I don't have. And, right. uh, and, but now I'm so busy that mm -hmm. I'm able to kind of not be as, I guess, sad about things like that, but I definitely still have my moments. And of so course. for, um, for Ted and, Rebecca to have this sweet moment. And it's so nice. I love their relationship and I would never, I hope they never like try to put them together because I just love the platonic friendship that they right. have. And I think it's such a refreshing thing to see. Me too. And, you know, based on season one and how they really, um, started to understand each other in a way mm -hmm. you know I feel like they've turned done everything right with this show so far yeah. I would be so surprised if they made them a romantic couple because this platonic thing is working so yeah. well and it goes Agreed. so deep yeah 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 they have such a lovely friendship and yeah. even just like him bringing her biscuits every week and just <laughs> all the cute little interactions I think are so funny and so I I really hope that they don't go that way but We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode, and that is the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. Weren't, weren't there times this show where you're like, oh, oh, don't go there, don't go there. And, but they just kept it, kept it platonic and kept it. Exactly. Up. Yeah. And so then we have Higgins that I guess every year he hosts, he invites every, everybody who doesn't have a place to go uh -huh. for Christmas, invites them to his uh, house. And uh, this is the first year that I guess everybody has, has accepted the invitation. <laughs> and so like the, the people just kept growing and growing and growing. Uh -huh. And each person, when they come would bring some kind of food item and, <laughs> Yeah, like all different kinds of weird jello and all this stuff. I wasn't sure if I wanted to eat the food at that table, but it would be a really interesting smorgasbord because all the players, you know, these little lost players who couldn't be with their family, they yeah. brought something from their home, uh, you know, their yeah. home country and stuff. So that would be really interesting and really fun. Yeah. And, and that was something I definitely related to because my family growing up, we almost always had other people yeah. with us, whether it was foreign exchange students that we had, whether it was yeah. people my dad knew at work or, yeah. you know, something like that. 
that uh, whether it might not have necessarily always been at Christmas, but just in general, our home was a place that if people needed a meal, they could come and, yeah. and we seemed like we almost always had somebody else right. new at the uh, table. And, and yeah. so I just loved, it was so heartwarming. Yes. It <laughs> to was. Use that phrase again. <laughs> it was again so good because that was the general theme of this whole show. But like you said about family and you know kind of recognizing a, a loneliness at the holidays that's what Higgins and his wife really mm -hmm. just opened their arms opened their home to these players and created a sense of family and let yeah. them in you know play play Nerf gun wars with the boys yeah. and you know and I love scenes. the fact that they have kept Higgins and his wife a like really stable they still love each other couple yes. because a lot of a lot of times on shows that I feel like they're sort of scared yeah. that, that some people will say, oh, that's not realistic, but it is realistic. Like yeah. a lot of couples are yeah. like, I think it's great to have one couple that's like a great, awesome couple that you love. Yeah. 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 They're a good family, a good family. It just made me love them more that they would do this for the, mm -hmm. the team, you know? Yeah. And I love at the end when they, when they have like the surfboard as part of a table and you see the <laughs> And didn't you love when Higgins said, like, he acknowledged each country and yes. each homeland that the players were from and the delight on their faces was so wonderful. And yeah. it just yeah. was, it was everything you wanted Christmas dinner to be. Yeah. And it, and it's, I think especially because last Christmas we weren't able to get together like that, yeah. you know, that I, it, it wasn't uh, for Christmas. It was, uh, that it was much that way for you, but for Thanksgiving, it was kind of funny uh, this last Thanksgiving because my mom, we only, there was only me, my mom and, and my mom and dad at yeah. Thanksgiving and my mom only made one pie and we we're like, what is happening? Yes. Not, we're supposed to make know. five pies. Yeah, that's right. Thanksgiving. I mean, that's certainly adequate for three people, of course, but it was just kind of like, what? this is not Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> And That's so there was a real escapist quality to the fact yeah. of this just like communal experience that I think yes. we all missed last year. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. That was, that was probably my favorite storyline, honestly, was, was so Higgins and his house. And every time he opened the door and there were three new players there with, with an interesting dish and yeah. just, I just love that. I, I love the fact that they, you know, it's kind of the old thing of like, we can always add more water to the soup, right? You know, it's just, they can always make room for more people. And I think oh, that's that good. <laughs> yeah. Great. Um, and then you, uh, then you have Roy, <laughs> uh, you have Roy and Keely and Roy's niece, Phoebe, and I love them so much. I love Roy and Phoebe so much. They're so funny together. They're ever, ever since the very beginning. I mean, they, he has been so good with her yeah. and he's like, not, you don't feel like he's good with anybody, but he's yeah. so good with his niece. Yeah. And, and you know, I, he, Keely just fits right in then with the three, with the, and yeah. the makeup great threesome yeah and I kind of I was kind of glad they didn't go with like a Christmas Carol kind of plot line for Roy yeah, that would have been easy to do because he's kind of a grump right, right. with him <laughs> yeah, like realizing well, the true value of Christmas or whatever and I love Christmas Carol don't get me wrong but it was just kind of refreshing that it was <laughs> that he, he was ready for sexy Christmas <laughs> like, right he was ready he was, he was he on was board sexy Christmas Phoebe totally derailed their plans because she had to stay somewhere so they they like make it all about Phoebe now which is great mm -hmm. but they I like the fact that you know he comes off as a grump and he likes to try to be a grump but he really isn't no and so yeah that's why I don't think a Scrooge sort of storyline would have really worked no. because he's grumpy but he's not unlovable he's not oh. unkind no he's not unkind. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I her breath because she's been taking she's got this cat and the cat is making her sick, uh, giving her uh, allergies. And so she has uh, the antihistamines that she has to take are making her breath terrible. And little boy in school, <laughs> he, 
he gives her a present of mouthwash and gum or whatever like all the stuff to make her breath better yeah. and she was she's very offended by yeah. it and, and then, but, but then her like roy and kylie are like it can't be that bad let's yeah. let's smell the breath and they're like oh no it's that was terrible. the best so funny They're like oh wow that is really bad and, this, and i love when keely was like this is a medical issue you know yeah. like are you dying or some maybe roy said are you dying but um so they go around because it's christmas they cannot get into a dentist office right and so he's like we're gonna knock on every door of my no. neighborhood and see it find a dentist and if they uh, so, if they don't find a dentist then he's going to pay them a thousand pounds yes or something like that he's yeah he's gonna pay keely and phoebe <laughs> each a thousand pounds so they get their coats on and they go and that's this is their storyline of ringing doorbells yeah. so they go door to door to door and um find and that dentist. was so funny i never would have thought of that in a million years for a christmas episode but i was just dying laughing every time <laughs> i know so how soon did you know that they were probably going to do a love actually type of scene? Like I thought for sure, oh, this yeah. is coming. This is coming. Yeah. And it did. Well, and I actually, I mean, I, I like love actually, but I don't really love that scene in love actually. I think it's a little weird. I mean, because he's, he's doing that. He's professing his love to the, the wife of his best friend so it's just kind of weird and i just feel like you should just keep that to yourself yeah and then she comes yeah exactly but the whole thing is iconic and everybody knows sure, sure. exactly what you're doing at, you know what you're mimicking when yeah. you do something like that so it was a nod to another christmas a famous british christmas yeah movie. no and it, it was but i i almost prefer it over well but actually is what i'm yeah. saying <laughs> That's awesome. I love when Roy growls, don't you? Because there's nothing like super awkward about this one, whereas I think it is kind of awkward in the love actually. Oh, that's true. I know. There wasn't much you mean between um, well i mean i just like in love actually the guy holding the cards whatever is professing his love to the wife of his best friend yeah not it's great. just weird yeah yeah totally like you I should keep I, that to yourself yeah <laughs> so i love <laughs> like it's not super family. romantic to me like the idea of a guy not that he wants to he doesn't actually want to break up their marriage but he kind of does a little bit kind of so does it's just and weird yeah, he's had an obsession with her. I mean, the whole thing is weird. You're yeah. right. It's not as. So I'm sorry, I'm saying I actually prefer this. <laughs> actually. Babies. But, but when they finally get the dentist, I just laughed so hard. And <laughs> that'd be a great way for us to get medical care in general. Does not knock for you, yeah. dentist. <laughs> that was really oh. funny. And. Yeah, and then they go to the house of the little boy, and uh, they have the cards, and mm -hmm. and I love that the, the, the boy's little dad is like, you know, now they leave or whatever the carolers. <laughs> it's carolers. The carolers. <laughs> and no one comes to the door. They're like, oh, nah, I don't want to watch yeah. that. <laughs> it was like, I mean. I, I don't think she should have been offended. She probably should have been grateful that he gave her right. mouthwash. Right? I mean, you, yeah, she kind of felt like it was a personal blight, but it's, it is helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah. I liked their storyline. I thought that was sweet, how they became more family oriented than just Roy yeah. and Keely, who we love Roy and Keely. They have a great relationship. They bring great things out in each other, but they yeah. are really strong when they're relating to Phoebe together. I think so too. I mm -hmm. agree. And so then we have the ending of the episode with uh, Rebecca and Ted <laughs> showing up at Higgins house uh singing with the whole sort of band yeah. and uh they all sing together christmas carols and it's just great perfect so good i mean she has an incredible voice oh yeah so good so i love when she picks up a microphone but um it was just kind of rounded it out because you wanted rebecca and ted to be at higgins house as well you know mm -hmm. i was like right. oh they should be there and then they then they did it was perfect and and even more than that they she gave up going to elton john's party right. in order to be with the whole crew which is yeah, so crew. cute 
She's such a yeah. softy. Yeah. Who is it? That, I forget that they say um uh they have the chance to hear do, doing karaoke. <laughs> like, he's like, yes. That's as great as that sounds. <laughs> I, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, but uh but yeah, they so funny. Something, yeah. And then, and then Daniel Craig doing a puppet show or something. Oh yeah, yeah. That's it's Daniel it Craig and Rachel Weiss. Yeah. Doing a, doing, a, doing a puppet show and it's a great every year. It's so funny. <laughs> But, yeah oh um, such a good one so. i also i did like in the love actually cards when phoebe says unless you make thoughtful amends you will stink forever <laughs> yes i have medicine that will help me not stink anymore but you <laughs> <laughs> but that's what i think is so characteristic of this show is that they really do they call people out, but then it's so redemptive. You know, it's like in a, but you don't have to stay this way type of, type of story. Right. You know? Yeah. And, and the characters are flawed characters. They have, mm -hmm. even Ted has yeah. weak moments, has moments where he's not perfect. Yeah. And so that makes you root for them yeah. a lot. Like he could be a very cloying character yeah. if they weren't careful, but he's just such a well-written character. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and, so tender. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I just love Higgins speech that he gives at the end. He says, I know you'd prefer to have been with them, your families, but it was truly an honor to have you with us to share our traditions and help make a few new ones to the family we're born with and to the family we make along the way. Aww. So great. So good. So good. Exactly. Yeah. What you want your life to be full of, you know, mm -hmm. the, the family you're born with, the family you make along the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it is a great episode. I absolutely loved it. And so if you haven't all seen it, uh, it's, it's honestly worth your, in my opinion, at least worth your $5 a month to sign up for Apple plus so that you yeah. can see this great show. Uh, and uh, you should definitely check it out. And if you have seen it, let us know what you think. What were your favorite parts mm -hmm. uh, in the comment section or on Twitter? We'd love to hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Carrie, where can people find you? Come over and find me on Instagram at Hallmark Comics. That's Hallmark underscore comics. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. And I have uh, on my website, I have my full review of Ted Lasso season one. I also, for backseat directors, I was able to participate in Junket, where I got to hear from the creatives of Ted Lasso, including the makeup, hair, visual effects, music, all that. So that was a really great experience. I'll put all that in the description. And if you'd like us to do more things like this, then let us know. And the uh, and if you have any suggestions, that would be great because it's not too uh, it's not too much uh, effort to watch a 22 minute episode <laughs> of the show. So let us know what you think, and uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. And make sure you're following the podcast, a Homer Keys Pod, and Homer Keys Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. Really appreciate that. And if you are watching on YouTube, because the video thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. And also we have our patron group and including, we have this month, our watch along with Julie Sherman Wolf, which is going to be super fun on the 21st. Yeah. yeah. We're watching the birthday wish. And so you don't want to miss out on that. It's really fun. And then we also have our merch store, which has tons of festive holiday designs. So take a look at that. And well, thanks so much, Carrie. And we'll talk to you all later. All Merry right, Christmas, bye -bye. everybody.